Okay, so we're here with uh, Will Amos, uh, Liberal MP for the riding of Pontiac on the Quebec side of the Ottawa River. Thanks for joining us, Will. C'est un plaisir d'être avec vous. So yesterday on Parliament Hill, I was outside and I saw a plane going by with a sign, a banner, Kill Bill C-69. Um, there's this suits and boots campaign that's trying to undo or prevent what the Liberal government wants to do with, uh, in terms of modernizing or, or fixing the environmental laws, uh, I think as, as, as people on your side of the house would put it. What is your response to the Suits and Boots campaign and, and this message by industry to stop Bill C-69? Well, I think that uh, our government's been really clear that from the beginning we, we knew we had to uh, repair all the damage that had been done uh, by the Harper administration over 10 years uh, to environmental assessment processes and to, broadly, uh, broadly speaking, environmental protection in Canada. Uh, we made those election commitments. Uh, we have been following up on those. Uh, and Bill, Bill C-69 delivers a whole series of improvements mm -hmm. uh, that we really believe will fundamentally uh, not only improve projects, uh, but get good projects uh, to move forward more swiftly. Uh, while ensuring that projects that really don't uh, don't pass muster um, are are uh, are able to be evaluated in a really stringent manner, so I think that we found the right balance. Um, and of course, there's always going to be opposition. Uh, that's that's the nature of uh, politics. And and uh, you know, in the meantime, um, there's healthy debate. There were 150 uh, or so amendments brought uh, by the Standing Committee on Environment and Sustainable Development uh, to the original bill. Uh, those were debated. Every single party uh, had an opportunity to bring them, and many, uh, I think each party had an amendment that was passed at the very least. So, uh, you know, w w our, uh, our, our bill, I think, is a good one, and it's been improved, and I'm looking forward to it passing. Okay. Uh, this event tonight is about Energy East um, and, and a book that's being released looking at what happened in this entire saga. Can you tell us from your perspective as, as an MP in, 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 a, in a region that was close to or part of the territory where the pipeline would cross over. How did you view this this debate from, from the start to the moment when, when the project was terminated? Well, I mean, I think we need to be clear. The, the, the project was uh, politically charged from the get-go. There were municipalities in my riding uh, who uh, who had uh, passed municipal resolutions in opposition to it, even before there was a process. So uh, this was, uh, you know, this is the legacy of the, uh, I feel, of the, uh, the polarization of, of environment and energy discussions, and that's, that's the legacy of the Harper administration. Uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, you know, there seems to be um, this desire to uh, build opposition before a project is even even proposed and, and debated uh, and discussed by experts, by community groups, uh, before, uh, before an appropriate evaluation body. In this case, it would have been the National Energy Board. Um, our government put in place a series of interim provisions uh, to improve the process, uh, to make it more rigorous. At the end of the day, TransCanada, the company bringing Energy East, decided it didn't want to move forward with the project. That was a business decision that they made. Um, but we were certainly, uh, had it gone forward, going to evaluate it rigorously. You say that they said, I mean, and it, it, they did, well, I, I don't know if they said it was a business decision or if they, they talked about, I mean, in terms of the language they used, but certainly the Conservatives have said that it's the Liberal government's fault or for changing the rules in the middle, middle of the, in the middle of the game. I mean, what would be your response to in terms of the criticism you've gotten from Conservatives about energy use failing? I would say it's unsurprising that the Conservatives would uh, try to lay blame uh, of a, regarding a business decision on, on a government that they're seeking, uh, seeking to replace. That's not, uh, not particularly surprising, but at the end of the day, uh, I think it is, it's fair to say that the process under the Harper administration uh, was entirely broken. That's why they achieved nothing as regards pipeline expansion, uh, whether, these were, they, whether they were uh, good projects or bad projects, they weren't moving forward. Okay. This current project now that, that um, is a major issue in Canada, the Trans Mountain Project, how do you feel about what, what the government has done so far to respond to the Federal Court of Appeal decision? 
Well, I think it was an important signal that the uh, the government uh, made the decision yesterday not to appeal to the Supreme Court of Canada. Uh, I think what that uh, that clearly indicates is a great respect for our judicial institutions, uh, a great respect for the constitutional rights of our Indigenous peoples, uh, and a great respect uh, for uh, all Canadians who want there to be strong, robust processes that stand the, te the test of uh, judicial leg legitimacy. We, we expect that to be done, and our government is going to make sure that this, uh, the Federal Court of Appeal decision is uh, reviewed and a plan is put in place, and we've already outlined a number of those measures, uh, to make sure that um, we have a, uh, a project that, if it goes forward, goes, goes forward in the right way. And it's the government's intention to move forward with this project because it's deemed to be in the national interest. Let me just ask you a general question about climate change and, and, and government policy on climate change. How, how important is this to you personally? How important do you think this government has, has demonstrated it is for, for its, uh, you know, in terms to it? How important is climate change to the Trudeau government right now? This issue is a top issue for our government. This issue is a top issue for me, Will Amos, as a member of Parliament for Pontiac. It's a top issue for my constituents when I knock on doors. Um, you know, people, people who who were struck by the the hurricane a couple of, uh, sorry, the tornado a couple of weeks ago, they they really feel as though they're experiencing extreme weather events that are that are not unrelated to climate change. We had serious flooding uh, last year. Uh, again, the linkage to climate change is there and everyone wants the government to act. So I'm proud that our government is pushing forward uh, courageously on the issue of pollution pricing. Canadians want the economy to be shifted towards a clean energy economy. They want to see major investments in public transit. We're doing that. Historic investments in public transit. They want to see historic investments in clean energy, uh, whether it's in the forestry sector or, or agriculture. Uh, you name the sector, we can do that and we are doing that. So I think part of the issue is that um, you know, while the public's attention seems to focus on mega projects uh, like pipelines uh, and uh, I think that really what the story of our government is about is about uh, getting the having a serious conversation about climate change, uh, taking serious measures, uh, but also being very conscious that we're trying to generate good middle class jobs uh, and and make sure that Canadian standard of living is maintained. Okay, thank you very much, Will. Thanks, Mike.